This episode of Texil is sponsored by Citrix ShareFile. We got an email from Jesus. He wrote in and said, I have an old laptop that I love, the Dell Duo. I've replaced the memory with faster memory and also replaced the hard disk drive with a solid state drive, which improved the speed of the laptop immensely. My problem is that the laptop is limited to two gigabytes of memory and I'm running big photo files and would like to substitute the solid state drive for memory. Is there any way that I can add more memory using the solid state drive? Thanks from Jesus. Oh, but goodness. Oh, um, boy. Yeah, so this is a Dell Duo. It's basically a convertible, right? You, you get to flip the lid over, and it goes Ooh. from being a tablet to a desktop. Um, Fine. Uh, yeah, it is. Here's the problem. Sometimes it's, it's time to start looking for a new machine. Um, your laptop is actually already using the solid-state drive for memory as a swap or a page file. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Well, it's time. It's, well, it's time. It's, it's kind of funny, right? Because we've been talking about, you know, we, we built like a $380 gaming PC, and it's going to be good for another couple of years uh, unless you want to go to a bigger than a 1080p monitor. Here's the thing. You're actually in the situation where a modest hardware upgrade is going to make a huge difference in your photo editing experience. So what I was saying before, your laptop is already using the SSD for memory as a swap or a page file. Everything that doesn't fit into that two gigabytes of memory uh, that the app needs gets pushed to that page file, which is why it's so yeah. slow, because memory, look, seriously, even though your SSD seems stupid fast compared to your old rotating hard drive, an SSD max is at like 650 megabytes per second, give or take. DDR3 and dual channel moves like 21 gigabytes per second. Oh, wow. That's a huge difference. So the SSD, so basically one, you're already using the SSD for memory. Two, the SSD is incredibly slow compared to main system memory. You know, it'll help. It's really cool. If you've never played around with um, some of the tuning guides uh, that Photoshop or Adobe puts together, it helps if you shut down the other apps, if it's Photoshop. Um, it's cool because you can go into like performance preferences um, and memory usage. Uh, if it, you can give it more memory. It'll use up to 70% of your memory by default. You can Whoa. keep increasing it. Just keep an eye on the efficiency indicator, which is so, I've lost the efficiency indicator. Oh, there's the efficiency indicator. So it's a little window, and it tells you if the efficiency value is below 100%, that basically means Photoshop's hitting the scratch disk, and you should add more memory. So, um, you know, you can go into, do you have your task manager up? Since I do, I'm yeah, I have it up right 10. now. You know, this is something else you can do if for your general, like, should I add more memory to my machine? You can look at the task manager, and it gives you an idea of how much memory your system is typically using. Yep, so I'm just using about 3.3 of my 8 gigs total, so yeah. I'm pretty good right now. And if that but, was, of course, that's 8 gigs. Yeah, and, but if it was hammered at the top of that, it'd be, it would be time to start looking at memory upgrade. Oh, yeah. Um, and we should also point out, it gets a little more complicated because if it's Photoshop and you want to use more than 1.7 gigabytes of RAM, you need the 64-bit version of Adobe Creative Suite, uh, which gives you a 3.2 gigabyte cap. And to go above that 3.2 gigabyte cap on memory, uh, which is 64-bit Adobe Creative Suite on top of a 32-bit operating system, you need the 64-bit Photoshop and a 64-bit OS and a hardware that supports a 64-bit memory architecture. And then you can have, you know, you can get all of the the memory that you know basically run as much memory as you can support so all of the awesome yeah <laughs> macintosh windows 64 but you basically need 64-bit windows and a 64-bit processor to use lots and lots of memory um this i think you've done all you can to speed up that machine um i should also painfully point out that speeding going to faster ram almost never makes a noticeable increase in real world performance compared to a new processor or more system uh memory, you know, to speed up photo editing, it's time to get a new machine. And I will say, if you're a big fan of the Dell and the convertibles, um, the two-in-one Ultrabook from Dell might be ah. the way for you to go, which has a similar flip top kind of environment there where it flips the screen around. So I'm just saying, or you could spend like $500 on a desktop and get performance that'll smoke your machine, go to a discrete GPU that'll actually accelerate Photoshop if you're a Photoshop user. If you're not a Photoshop user, find out what will accelerate your Photoshop editing application. But sometimes, you have to upgrade. Yeah, you do. And a two gigabyte cap on memory. You have done glorious things with that machine. It's time to retire it, or augment it with a desktop. Go eight gigs. For half, yeah, for half the yeah. price of a really nice laptop, you can get a desktop that'll smoke that. If That's you true. have yeah. a monitor. If you don't have a monitor, then you gotta buy a monitor and a desktop. Yeah. And it just goes on and on. And eventually, you got eight grand in the hole and you're trying to figure out where your food money went. 
Ramen for life. <laughs> no, Even though it's bad thank for you. you. More and more ramen. Mm, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> we have some fun times coming up with Android and iOS devices and file sharing. But first, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. The flow of information is critical to keeping your business alive and successful. Contracts, spreadsheets, <laughs> my favorite invoices, all the important business files. All too often they get sent around as regular email attachments. You got no way to secure these files. You don't even know if they've been received or reviewed. You lose control the moment you hit send and your information, that stuff that keeps your business alive, gone on the internet. That's why you should be using Citrix ShareFile. It is the easy to use business tool for sending, receiving, and sharing files. With ShareFile, your attachments are sent as secure links. You send files of almost any size without bounce backs. It's always under your control. You decide who has access to your files and for how long. You get notified to let you know who opened your files and when, and you can password protect your files to really get your security optimized. You get to easily share files and collaborate with others without worrying that, that PDF's getting sent all over the planet. And ShareFiles even got mobile apps that let you access your files anywhere, anytime you've got an internet connection. Do me a favor, check out Citrix ShareFile. I got a 30-day free trial for you, no obligation. Go to ShareFile.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter in Techzilla. Remember, ShareFile.com, type in Techzilla, support the show, clean up your business. It's a good thing. <laughs>